Hi all, another mega exciting game to show you from the Norway tournament. Sergei Karyakin against Levon Aronian, so a super clash of course. E4 from Sergei. We go into a primary school chess opening. <laughs> kind of, well, it's used a lot in primary school to demonstrate the importance of the F7 or F2 soft spot. Uh, so instead of the broiler pairs, so we see um, this variation. And this is Hungarian defense and Goko Pianissimo. So that's even quieter than the Italian game, Pianissimo. So not necessarily quiet though. D3 looks pretty stodgy. We have the move A4 here, usually in this position, C3. There's over 700 games like this, etc., etc., etc. Uh, so let's see. So a4, so slightly off the beat, beaten track. A5. We're only a few games here with this particular configuration. Bishop g5 pinning, trying to relieve the pin. Now bishop e7 is played. Probably it's a bit dodgy to try and play g5. It, there might be a sack on. Or is it about equal? Let's see. This is a dangerous sack to always consider. It can be unpinned. Depends if white's got any major follow up. Maybe black is willing to set the exchange there. White's willing just to keep the pressure. And we get an unbalanced position basically. It's quite difficult to assess. Maybe it's about equal technically at a certain depth here anyway. It seems to be about equal. So that's weird, crazy stuff. But there's no need to do that. Uh, we have the karma move bishop e7 which is easier to kind of think about for both sides bishop g3 d6 protecting the pawn h3 maybe that's against knight h5 here to be able to give the bishop h2 let's just just make sure on that because otherwise a move like h3 is a bit of a wasted move actually is knight h5 even on knight takes e5 might not be even on here probably the more significant thing is not knight h5 but bishop g4 could be annoying because then relieving the pin there might be tricky maybe the bishop can drop there without any g4 so there's usually good reason to play a move like h4 it's not just played routinely at this level so presumably it's to do more with the pin king h8 which kind of makes way to unpin the f pawn to get it ready uh, for some sort of attack and maybe there's a tempo gain on the bishop to be had later so c3 knight h7 queen b3 trying to dissuade black from this kind of primitive f pawn plan which is something that i'll definitely consider a lot of the time uh, because there's pressure points on f7 and b7 it's played anyway uh, and the bishop's duty seems overloaded right e takes doesn't the bishop on c8 seem overloaded here? Well, in fact, this is the ingenuity of Levon Ronin. This is a nice temporary pawn sack here. He realizes this pawn doesn't necessarily need to be taken immediately. There's kind of no, no rush, creative, relaxed uh, perspective is a unique aspect, in my view, of Levon Ronin's play. He kind of this calmness about losing material and just taking it in, not panicking. Now, if he takes with the bishop, uh, then I think just b7 is there for the taking, potentially. Or am I wrong? I might be wrong, actually. Just bishop d7, and um, it's okay for black, actually. It's not that much of a penalty it seems to play bishop t takes f5 but i i personally think this this move is more nifty what he played bishop f6 it vacates e7 to be able to play knight e7 taking f5 we have bishop e6 knight e7 e so the, the yeah the play is revolving around this f5 pawn knight h4 clinging on to the pawn once more and introducing possibly knight g6 at some point when the knight's not guarding g6 that's never going to happen, but just in theory. Queen e8. And now we have white forcibly uh, removing that defender of the b7 pawn. Now here, uh, it's too dangerous to take here because 
bishop takes this forcing sequence favors black greatly actually not just a little bit but greatly this big forcing sequence here is too strong and in fact there's a curious line where the queen gets trapped in the center of the board almost yeah uh if if queen takes d6 white's getting mated there uh with the check and the check and mating so yeah that's an example of disaster or the queen moves to c4 yeah the queen's um if the queen moves to c4 here i think d5 then or even no just just queen f8 check and then we still have the mating thing uh yeah so th this is this is a total disaster scenario um, immediately you might think why not queen f8 immediately well the queen's actually holding g2 so to nudge it first is much better that is it's totally it's totally we're winning even here actually uh just play e4 it's it's kind of winning even here again e4 there it's just blocking that it's it's horrible so this is not the sort of thing that white should allow to happen uh, so he plays knight g6 okay then basically we've got some simplification with it still being technically around equal at this point knight g5 but black has achieved something and he's got pressure on d3 again he's not in a rush to take on d3 here you might think why doesn't he take on d3 it's possible white can gain a tempo with queen b5 and we might reach a position where it's um it's interesting this this kind of play is interesting but black even though faced with this big a pawn in this line now this is just a theoretical uh kind of engine trajectory that this this could actually be okay for black because there's certain things about the position where it can get unpleasant for white on uh in in this kind of scenario it can get unpleasant for example like this this is just a fictional continuation there seems to be some counterplay even if uh we have this position with queen takes d3 queen b5 but anyway uh this is bypassed so knight g5 keeps more maybe you can argue keeps more of the tension going uh and now h4 yeah is a bit of a target actually and it was also knight c5 with tempo to win d3 keeping the queen on an aggressive square queen e4 queen h5 knight d2 now knight f4 and the threat now d5 is a nuisance this is snapped off uh you know if something like well if b4 then knight e2 shows the nuisance of the knight if if we play a move like rook a b1 then d5 this position we can actually take here and take on d3 and that should be about equal so it's snapped off but remember this pawn is a bit vulnerable now and this pawn is immune if queen takes then we have the skewer and double attack uh and yeah that's that's unpleasant there's no queen f3 there to it because we've got the rook on f3 uh so basically uh, we have queen f3 giving up that pawn there and we're back to six pawns each equal on pawns rook fe1 rook b8 targeting b2 that's protected now g5 and it looks as though aggressive intents of g4 and maybe g3 later rook e6 um yeah if white plays rook a c1 g4 uh, is good here because i i think queen takes f4 is unplayable yeah there's yeah sorry there's bishop takes c3 here hitting the rook uh, so so basically g4 is actually threatened here now after rook e6 though it's a different case if g4 here queen takes there's no there's no doing this because you know rook h6 end of the game it's a very different style with the rook on e6 kind of pinning the knight uh, the bishop to h6 very different style indeed so white's trying to make sure he's not going to get wiped out with g4 basically bishop g7 again g4 threatened rook g6 again stopping g4 so whilst before a lot of the time it was about f5 now it's about g4 it's moved the, the center of attention in the battle has moved one square forward to g4 it seems recently in recent moves rook b e8 taking a nice center file very nice 
the equivalent of keeping the ball in football. This is a very nice occupation to have. D4 blunting the bishop. King h7 harassing the rook. That's protected. The king goes back. Now f3 is actually threatened that the queen's been lifted off that f3 square. f3 is threatened. We have d5, which allows f3. Can white just simply go back to blockade against f3? Let's have a quick check on that possibility. The answer seems to be yes, and maybe this is the best move to play here. Simply go back. And if here, just simply repeat. So I'm not entirely sure. White's d5, is it trying for more? Is it trying for a, a win? But maybe in doing so, it's trying for a loss. It seems to be trying for a bit more this move instead of just going back to stop f3. And you get my favorite form pawn here, T-H-O-R-N, not F-A-W-N as Jessica Fisher, Fisher Queen. Jessica Fisher Queen has put on chess games com affectionately. <laughs> it can sound like F-A-W-N, but no, we've got the famous form pawn here. And it's dangerous, uh, very, very dangerous indeed. How can how can it be so dangerous? Well, White actually takes it. Maybe this is a mistake. Actually, maybe G3 is better because Queen H3 can be answered with Queen F1 protecting G2. But this position, if we look at this position, there's King F7, and that wins a pawn. That Rook is harassed, losing a pawn, and that can't be White's intention. Even though he wins a5, this position here is tricky. b4, there's bishop takes c3. What does white do concretely here? Knight c4, there's d5. And this position, it's still tricky for black. End up losing a b2, and the rook's going behind the pawn Tarash rule. Uh, so that's eventually, you know, that's, that's good for black anyway. But so we have this move g takes, which is technically a lot worse. Than playing, it seems, uh, than playing g3. Rook f4, and now the intention seems to be queen h3. So keeping the lock down on f3 and then playing rook h4. King g2, but there's a snag here, rook e f8, which the attacking players should make note that the routine rook h1 is not possible because of rook g4 check. Look at this. So by doubling the rooks, rook g4 check, that becomes a loose piece. For example, here we just take that, that becomes a loose piece. And if it takes here, we just take on f2 and rook f3, and it's absolutely winning. So very very nice idea, rook g4 in response to rook h1. So knight d2 is chosen. g4, but black's attack looks a bit dangerous now. f2 is a big pressure point. King g1. Rook eight f five threatening to swing the rook like this to mate on h one, lovely stuff if you can get it. Knight e four, rook takes f three, the attack is on threatening mate a technicality, it's addressed. Rook e five, shielding g seven, threatening to unpin the bishop. Knight g three, uh, now this is just snapped off. King f one now king h seven, threatening check to win the queen. So by unpinning the bishop, the bishop is threatening. Bishop takes queen after rook f5. That's taken off, but it leaves white with a totally hopeless position here in terms of king's safety. Even though he's just one pawn down, the game ended here. Sergei Karyakin had to resign here. He's been hacked, basically, in this game. Let's see. If queen f2, check. The king's just getting it. Queen h1 is difficult to address here. Check. Check. And we can mate there on h3 or win the queen. That could be a scenario. It's just hopeless in this final position. Let's have a look again. The final position. I mentioned queen f2, but what does white actually do? His king safety is just shot to pieces. The heavy mob is here around the king. What do we do with white? Rook d1? We can unpin the rook to threaten things like rook f5 or queen f3. It's hopeless. The king's just not shielded. <laughs> you know, if queen f2, we can win the queen. It, the, the king is not shielded here anymore. So, Neville Neronian has a really relaxed dynamic style. It's like he takes his time to win pawns. It's like that can be one part of the characterization of his style. We see this in many of his amazing games. 
this relaxed kind of dynamic aggressive style and what a beauty this one is but Sergei Karakin perhaps should have done this prophylaxis a bit better you know re-blockaded the F pawn uh, and things like that I think he technically should have held it but maybe he was for some reason quite adventurous with d5 not estimating the force the brute force of blacks attack so level Iranian leads the tournament at this point and uh, the world champion by contrast has drawn every game it's not been the best for the world champion at the moment in his home Norway uh, location but uh, but it's it's great for level Iranian I think um, it seems as though he got inspiration from the farming day maybe he's having a lot of fun at the tournament generally in Norway that's one suspicion I have personally comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much